She was a loving and law-abiding family woman. Her father, a former FBI agent. Now, both are facing decades in prison over the murder of her husband. A killing, they say, was in self-defense. Tonight, they're speaking out about what they say happened that night with details the jury never got to hear. Here's ABC's Lindsay Janets. Is your father guilty of murder? No, my father is, you know, guilty of saving my life. Tonight, Molly Martins Corbett and her father, Tom Martins, are behind bars, convicted of second degree murder in the death of Molly's husband, 39 year old Jason Corbett. And this morning, a father and daughter in North Carolina are headed to prison. The father and daughter claim it was self defense. They make for a rare pair of murder defendants. She'd never broken the law while he'd made a career enforcing it, working for the FBI for 30 plus years. And yet, here they are, enmeshed in a crime that's made news from the mountains of North Carolina to Ireland, where nearly a decade ago, Molly took a job as a nanny after an inquiry from a father in desperate need. Jason Corbett was emotional. He had lost his wife and there were two babies. Very quickly, their relationship goes from professional to personal. She becomes a mother to Jason's two kids, then three-year-old Jack and one-year-old Sarah. After three years together, Jason and Molly marry in Molly's home state of Tennessee. On the wedding day, I was excited for them. And, it... and the family stays in the U.S., moving into this four-bedroom home in North Carolina. It really was a dream summer. Molly's got it all, except one thing. Jason is refusing to make her the children's legal mother. I felt like he was actually going to follow through with the adoption papers. But that never happened, and Molly says there were other problems in their relationship. He was very controlling and he was very possessive. He would dictate what she should wear or what she should shop for or when she should be home. Molly says the fights were escalating and the kids witnessed them. Later, son Jack tells a social worker what he saw. He would physically and verbally hurt, physically and verbally hurt my mom. Molly says a lawyer told her to document any alleged abuse. You're with the family. Are you finishing your dinner, hon? I'm talking to you. No. Is this how you treat this event? You just ignore me? But she says she's caught between a rock and a hard place. Without a legal adoption, she has no shot of custody in the event of a divorce. Yeah, I always came to the same conclusion that, you know, it wouldn't, it, it wouldn't be better for them to lose second mother. How? Tom Martins knows his daughter is suffering, but decides she doesn't need another man bossing her around. I wasn't going to interfere in Molly's marriage. That was Molly's marriage. But two years ago, that changed when Tom and Molly's mother, Sharon, were spending the night at her house. I don't know what precisely woke me up. But what I heard were loud voices and a kind of, a, like thumping. Uh, something bad was going on. So I grabbed that Little League baseball bat and I ran upstairs. The bat was in his room. He had brought it as a gift for his grandson. It's What'd awful. you see? It's awful. He has his hands around her neck. And so he's got her in a, in a chokehold. Fear was, you know, secondary at that point. I was just so ashamed that my father would see me like that. And I said, let her go. And he said, I'm going to kill her. Tom says he hit Jason in the back of the head with the baseball bat. But he says Jason kept dragging Molly toward the bathroom. Hit him hard in the back of the head again. You hit him hard? Yep, I did. He still got her by the throat, but he changes tactics. He decides to come back at me. Jason just grabbed the bat away. It was like it was nothing. Tom says Jason throws him to the ground. And I was screaming, don't hurt my dad, don't hurt my dad. And I thought, he's going to hit my dad with the bat, and that's it. He's going to kill my father. So I get up, and I rush him, and I grab the bat with two hands. I'm trying to hit him with the bat, and he goes down. And then I realize, OK, he's not going to get up. OK, looks like the threat is over. OK, what do you mean he's in bad shape? He's hurt? He's, he's bleeding all over, and I, I may have killed him. Hit him in the head. With what? With a baseball bat. Molly and her father tell the police it was self-defense. And just days after Jason's death, Molly begins fighting for custody of the children she's raised for eight years. While she's focused on Sarah and Jack, the police have turned their focus to Molly and Tom. Davidson County prosecutors say they took a hard look at these photos and noticed a vast difference between Jason's injuries and the absence of injuries they say on Molly and her father. They walked away with nary a mark on them 
and he left on a board with his skull crushed and his scalp ripped off. Investigators say that bloody brick found in the bedroom is a key piece of evidence. In her police interview that night, Molly admits she hit her husband with it. I hit him on the head. Mm -hmm. On the head with what? With a, a brick on my neck. Prosecutors become convinced Molly and her father are lying and charge them with second degree murder and voluntary manslaughter. Are you guilty of murder? No. Did you murder your son in law? No, I didn't murder my son in law, and I would challenge any reasonable man, much less a reasonable father, to say that this was unnecessary force. During the trial, Tom Martins took the stand and said he simply did what any father would do. You were defending your daughter. I was. I'm going to do everything that I have to do to save her life. But prosecutors tell the jury to disregard Tom's testimony and focus instead on the blood spatter in the bedroom. They point to pictures like these, noting that most of the blood spatter is on the lower half of the wall, with the area above relatively clean. Prosecutors say that demonstrates that Jason was still being hit after he was down. They challenge the notion that there was ever a threat that night, floating a possible motive for murder, that Jason may have been considering returning to Ireland and taking his kids with him. Molly's life was about those children and she wanted those kids. She was willing to kill for it? Apparently, maybe so. We will file these Defense attorney Walter Holton says Molly was a victim of abuse, and there were two children in the house that knew it, and the jury didn't get to hear from them. Mr. Corbett's family took the children to Ireland. They could have brought them back and let them testify. But during the trial, prosecutors read a statement from Jack where he called Molly a murderer. And according to prosecutors, before the trial, they spoke to Jack, and this time he denied his father ever abused Molly. After nearly four hours of deliberation, they return a verdict, guilty of second-degree murder. These jurors say they were convinced in part by the lack of injuries to Molly and Tom, and they say they have a theory of their own about what really happened. I believe Molly made the first blow. Mm -hmm. Why? I believe Jason was in bed sleeping and she struck him with the paver. And her dad helped her cover it up? I think at some point, dad came to help out and help cover up. The judge sentenced both father and daughter to 20 to 25 years in prison. When I spoke with Molly, she told me that even before that sentence, she'd already lost something more precious than her freedom. My life ended that day that they took the kids. For Nightline, I'm Lindsay Janice in Lexington, North Carolina. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.